IRAs versus Roth IRAs, what is the difference? Have you ever wondered how much you can pass on without any estate tax? Roth conversions, when are you a good candidate to maybe do one? Long-term care, a big concern. What are some ways that I can take care of that? P.E. ratios, you hear these stock buybacks happening? How does that affect P.E. ratios? Well, folks, we're gonna talk about that and much more, so stay tuned. Retiring Well, brought to you by Centennial Wealth Advisory. Financial advisors, specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan. Retiring Well, helping you plan for a successful and comfortable retirement. Retiring Well, plan to retire well. Hi, welcome back. Listen, in this segment, I want to talk to you about IRAs and Roth IRAs and kind of some of the main differences between the two. When you put in or contribute to an IRA, you get a tax deduction, okay? That means you're not having to pay tax on that contribution. And you get what's called tax deferred growth, meaning it's that, that money in that IRA is growing tax deferred. You're not having to pay tax on that. But by the time you get to the distribution phase, now it's fully taxable because you have to understand this is money that's never been taxed. And so now as you take out Uncle Sam's there, they, they want their share, okay? In a Roth IRA, it's a little bit different. You're putting in with after-tax dollars, meaning you're paying the tax on the money going up front. But like an IRA in the sense that you get tax-deferred growth, okay? It's going to grow and you're not going to have to pay tax on that part. But the beauty of a Roth IRA is once you get to the distribution phase and now have to take money out, it's not taxable, okay? Now there's some qualifications that you have to reach in order to take the money out, but once you get to that retirement age and you're pulling out, um, it's gonna be tax-free. Highly advantageous, right, especially in tax planning. Now, the concept would be if I'm in my working years and maybe in a high income tax bracket, it, the, having that tax deduction is highly beneficial, so I might want to be more apt to put into an IRA. All right. Um, the idea being that I save at this rate, and then lo and behold, I might be in a lower bracket later on, maybe when I retire, so I save at this rate, pay at this rate. Highly advantageous. But if I'm a younger taxpayer, maybe I, I, I don't have that high income yet, I'm just kind of building up my career, I'm already in a low bracket, Maybe a Roth IRA might be more advantageous because, you know, again, with a Roth IRA, I, I don't need to save at that high rate. So I'm in a low bracket, probably going to be in a low bracket by retirement. So, so I don't need that tax deduction. But what I do want, I've got all these years that I can have that money grow tax deferred so that when I pull it out at retirement, now it's tax free highly advantageous maybe for that person. Now, there's a lot of what you call 401ks out there, okay? These are company plans that the employer puts into and the, and the employee can put into, right? Now, a lot of these plans will have features where they have a pre-tax method and they have a Roth IRA option that you have available. It's important to understand that the employer portion that goes into those plans, the match as they call it, that has to go into a pre-tax plan, meaning it has to be where you don't have to pay tax on their contribution, so that's go pre-tax. But you have the choice of picking pre-tax or Roth IRA. So maybe for somebody like you, you might want the company put their part in their match, but you put into a Roth IRA um, part, especially if you're in that low bracket. Now folks, you, you know, understanding the difference between an IRA and Roth IRA is very important. I mean, a Roth IRA is really nice once you get to retirement, especially in tax planning. So if you're somebody that's got, you know, you got some of these monies and maybe those different buckets and you want to see which one might be more advantageous to you, then I encourage you, give us a call and we'll, we'll help you through that. forward to helping you plan to retire well.
Are you retired or approaching retirement in the next five to 10 years? Join the Centennial Wealth Advisory Team for an exciting presentation with complimentary gourmet dinner and learn essential financial strategies for a comfortable retirement. Three dates and locations to choose from. Call 888-608-5825 to reserve your seats today. There is no cost and no obligation. Call 888-608-5825. Welcome back. I want to talk to you about what's called the estate tax exemption. Okay, now this is an amount that the IRS establishes that you can have, that you can pass on as an inheritance to your heirs, okay, without them having to pay estate tax. Okay. Now, if you didn't know this under the under the old law before the Tax Reform Act of 2017, um, that amount that you could pass on without any estate tax was about five and a half million dollars. And if you were married, now it's basically eleven million dollars that you could pass on. Well, with the Tax Reform Act of 2017, they doubled that again. So now, as an individual, you can pass on a little over eleven million. But if you're married, now it's twenty. $22 million. So you can see that um, not a lot of people or heirs are having to pay what you call estate tax on their, on their inheritance anymore. Now one thing that's an exception is IRAs. IRA money has never been taxed. That's not something that you can pass on to your heirs without any tax being paid. They're going to have to receive that IRA and there's gonna, they're going to have to do one of two or three things. First, they can take a lump sum of that IRA and pay the tax on it all at once. Um, or they have to take it out within five years, or if it's for the first heirs, they can pass, you know, they can stretch it out over their lifetime, which can be highly beneficial, especially if they're in a high tax bracket. Now, I want you to be careful, in old estate planning law, a lot of attorneys would create these trusts that could double the estate tax exemption, okay? When that estate, estate tax exemption was much lower, let's say at 500,000, um, that kind of planning was very necessary, especially if somebody had a, had a large estate. But now that that estate tax exemption is so high, you know, I don't see a lot of attorneys doing those kind, that kind of planning. But if you had a trust that was done prior to January of 2011, and its sole purpose was to do that kind of planning where, where it was breaking up your trust into two so you could double that estate tax exemption, you're gonna find out that with the new rules from January 2011, it might make that, that trust um, a disadvantage. Now, a lot of these estate planning attorneys will tell me that all they have to do is put an amendment into your existing trust, but if you haven't had your trust reviewed since that time and you remember your trust being created for that uh, purposely, then you're gonna wanna get with an attorney and have that amendment done. Now, another thing just to recognize with you know, estate planning is that when you pass on an inheritance, they get a step up in basis. So if you pass on a house that maybe you only paid 50,000 for, it's now worth 200,000, they get the ability to step it up and say now they paid 200,000 for it. So if they sell it, uh, it's gonna much lower the gain. So hopefully you found this uh, informational. Um, if you don't have an estate plan and you wanna kind of be directed to somebody that might be able to help you, we, we work very closely with a lot of the estate planning attorneys, we'd be glad to help. You know, Larry, two really great segments there. I hope everybody was listening out there because there was definitely some nuggets of information that you really don't want to pass by here, especially those IRAs and Roth IRAs. You know, so often we get questions about what's best for me or what should I do, or I've heard a little bit about these Roths and, and should I do that? I literally just met with some folks here in Northern Michigan this last week, and they make about 65000 a year between the two of them, married couple, kids are gone, and they're, they're about five, six years away from retirement. And for years, they've just been putting money in traditional IRAs, and they finally asked a question, and we, as we were sitting down and, and, and discussing their situation, you know, maybe we should consider Roth IRAs because there's still a little bit of room in that 12% tax bracket. Now, we don't know what I, um, tax brackets are going to be next year for that matter, but right now, they appear like they're kind of at a historically low rate, so we really want to try to maximize the current tax situation we're in. And if that's something like you, maybe now is a really good time to review your current tax plan you know before it's too late because guys you know we know all the time when we meet with people they come in if you've put everything in pre-tax money it's someone handcuffs a little bit on our planning 
Yeah, for sure. And, and that's something for those of you watching where that's part of what Centennial Wealth Advisory does year in and year out for their clients is just looking at where your tax situation is currently and not just looking at it for that year, but then looking at it from a long term planning perspective of, OK, what's the impact, let's say, later on down the road in a case where you're 70 and a half and have required minimum distributions? Or what about if you're married and one spouse passes away? What are the tax implications that you're going to face? at that point and it's tough to get a real good idea but it's something that's important that we feel goes hand in hand with your your investments and and ultimately your your overall retirement plan and our goal to help you plan to retire well guys I'm thinking I'm glad we're talking about Roth conversions because that's actually what I'm going to be talking about in the next segment okay. that in um, and in soon to come is uh, I'm gonna talk about long-term care as well so stay tuned Today's retirement challenges can be mastered. Knowledge is power because you can confidently plan ahead and make educated financial decisions for a successful and comfortable retirement. We are Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning, serving all of Northern Michigan with offices in Traverse City, Cadillac, Petoskey, and Gaylord. And we invite you to an informative and exciting live event with a complimentary gourmet dinner. You'll learn highlights of the Tax Reform Act, how an IRA gets taxed to a surviving spouse, how two similar portfolios can end up with two drastically different results, what a bull market is and how long it can last, and much more. Call 888-608-5825 to register and choose the date and location that works best for you. Tuesday, December 10th, at the Evergreen Resort in Cadillac. Wednesday, December 11th, at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. Or Tuesday, December 17th, at Big Buck Brewery in Gaylord. The live event starts at 6 p.m. and is free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 to reserve your seats today. There is no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important live event. Educated financial decisions. Call 888-608-5825. Hi, welcome back. Now listen, in this segment, I want to talk about Roth IRAs and when, uh, when you might want to do what they call a Roth conversion. Now when Roth IRAs first came out, I, not, I know a lot of folks ran to the accountant, they ran to the advisor and they said, hey, should I do this or not? And that, that advisor, that accountant maybe rendered an opinion and then you've never looked at it again. Folks, this is something that has to be looked at every single year. Um, there's people that are, let's say, in the lower tax bracket, okay? They've got their IRA money. Now, remember, our IRA money's never been taxed. So every dollar we take out is going to be taxed. So knowing that and knowing that you have a partner in that account, Uncle Sam, possibly State of Michigan, that when you take that money out, they want their share, trying to minimize that the best way we can is huge. So we have the ability to, to do that by doing what we call a Roth conversion. That means take my IRA money, pay the tax on it, and then convert it over and put it into a Roth IRA. Now, what are the benefits of a Roth IRA? Well, from here, for now that you've paid the tax on that money, the, that money now continues to grow tax deferred, just like it did in the IRA. But the beauty is then when you go to pull it out, it's not taxable at all. So the idea of being able to convert IRA money to Roth IRA money is big in tax planning. So if I'm in that low bracket, 15% bracket, and that's how, what Uncle Sam's going to get every time I take a dollar out, then if I have any room in that bracket at all, why would I not be wanting to accelerate money out of the IRA and getting it over into the Roth IRA as fast as possible? I'm not giving Uncle Sam any more than he would have gotten before, but the earlier I get it into a Roth IRA, the quicker that Roth is going to grow tax deferred and, and be a bigger benefit for me down the road. Now, right now we've been given a huge opportunity with the Tax Reform Act because the tax rates are about 3% lower than they used to be. So right now, if you were in the 15% bracket, you're now in the 12% bracket. If you were in the 25% bracket, you're now in the 22% bracket. So we've got over the next six, seven years this huge opportunity to be able to 
accelerate or use up that bracket, so we're buying out Uncle Sam at 12 cents on the dollar versus 15 cents on the dollar, or 22 cents on the dollar versus 25 cents on the dollar. So taking advantage of this is huge. Now, a lot of people go, Larry, aren't there contribution limits to putting into a Roth IRA? Yes, there's contribution limits, but not when you're doing a conversion. You can, do an, you can pay tax on your entire IRA. It could be a million dollars if you're that fortunate enough to have that. And you can convert it over to a Roth IRA. And there's actually no income limitations as well. So if you think you're a candidate for that, then I encourage you. Give us a call. We'll, we'll see if you're a candidate. We'd be glad to help you with that. Thanks. Hi, welcome back. Listen, in this segment, I want to talk about long-term care. Listen, if there's any question that we get asked more times than not when somebody comes to visit us, it is, do I need long-term care insurance or not? Well, the first place I want to go anytime I'm ha having this discussion is, you know, what is your means to pay for that care should it happen? If I'm somebody that's saved quite a bit um, and it's more than enough to cover the cost of that care when that should happen, then, then really do I need anything more? If I'm somebody that might be legacy minded and want to leave a lot behind and want to protect some of that, well then that's a whole different story, right? But if I'm somebody that's saved sufficient amount away, then, then maybe I don't need to have any kind of insurance. We call this self-insuring. Now, just to give you a perspective of what that might look like, I've heard statistics be all over the place on this, but I've heard anywhere between three, maybe five years is the average stay in long-term long care. Um, and probably the average cost being somewhere around 100,000. So what's, what's the threat to my estate in that regard? Might be anywhere between 300 and 500,000 should I need that kind of care. And that's just for one person. What if, I'm a, what, which, what, what if I'm a couple that's even twice that? But if I'm somebody that saves sufficient amount aside to pay for that care and I can cover that, then maybe I don't need anything more. But if I'm somebody who has not, then I'm somebody who might want to consider long-term care insurance. Okay, now the, the only drawback to long-term care insurance is there's a cost that I'm gonna have to incur to, in, in, to pay for that insurance. Um, it's a cost that might rise as I get older. Some do, some don't, but it may be one that, that grows the closer I get to needing that. The other negative maybe with long-term care insurance is that it's a use it or lose it. You know, I'm gonna pay for that insurance for quite some time and I get, get close to maybe needing it. Maybe I can't afford it and now all, that, all those premiums I paid have gone for not. But today, folks, they have, a, they have what they call hybrids. And hybrids are um, the ability to take a segment of your savings, put it aside for that kind of care. Maybe it's a lump sum. It goes, it goes aside for that care, and then, and then it's insuring me for that benefit. And then if I don't need that long-term care, there's usually some kind of a risk, or I should say a premium payback. Okay, that might, you know, it's not going to get the kind of growth you might have had maybe in an investment account, but at least it's a return of premium. I get a lot back of what I set aside. So there's a lot of different features with these hybrids, but it's something, just see another example with life insurance. You know, it's got a death benefit, but can be used for long-term care. And then if you don't need it for long-term care, at least it paid a death benefit out. So a lot of different features here, a lot of moving parts, but it's something you might want to check into because if it's not typically just long-term care insurance, maybe it's a hybrid that might be more beneficial. Well, I hope you found this valuable. If it's something you want to talk more about, then I encourage you to give us a call. We'd be glad to talk more about it with you.
You know, wow, that was two more really powerful segments there. Really good job, Larry. I think, you know, continuation of our Roth conversation we had earlier. Can't stress enough, if you don't have a tax plan, really take a look at that. There's still time, you know, left this year to potentially get in and talk about stuff. No matter what time it is in the year, there's always time for a tax plan and how that plays in your retirement plan. The other topic there that you talked about, Larry, the long-term care, not really a fun topic to talk about. I mean, pretty serious, but a lot of us are seeing that happen around us with family members, friends, you know, kind of it seems like the statistics are telling us it's likely a possibility for you and your family that you may end up in that situation. And so often, you know, it doesn't mean that you got to buy insurance or whatever the situation is, have a plan. You know, what are you going to do if you or your spouse or loved one go into that situation and how are you going to handle it? You don't want to, you know, be literally checking that person into the facility and then decide what to do. I mean, walk with the financial advisor, have a plan in place. So that way, the least amount of surprises to your plan typically uh, means better chance of success. Yeah, and guys, that's something where I think of like with our television show, education is very important. We want to lay out for you, okay, here are your different options. So recently had a visit with a, with some clients that we've been working with for several years now, and they're getting closer and closer to that point in time where he's going to be retiring, and, and they've sort of delayed making any major decisions about uh, long-term care. And so we were just evaluating, okay, what does that look like to just potentially use your assets? Now, they were more legacy-minded, wanting to leave some money behind to their two children and so we then started diving down the road of okay what does traditional long-term care insurance look like um, what does it look like to do some of these now, now the life insurance types of policies that have accelerated uh, death benefits so these are different insurance products and so uh, you need to be looking into those areas and make sure that you're well aware of the the advantages and disadvantages of that but looking at all those because again it comes back to uh, educating so that you understand what your options are and then you can make a, a good decision for yourself. Yeah, John, I'll get those people sometimes that are not legacy minded, right? They just as soon bounce the check to the funeral home when they yeah. die, right? But I'll always encourage them to try to keep in mind that we don't know what end of life issues are going to look like, you know. So as we have somebody taking income from a portfolio, it'd be really nice if we can maintain as much of the principal as possible, preserve wealth, and maybe even grow it a little bit over time while they take income. Because listen, what if we end up in long-term care here? We don't have insurance. Um, maybe now we can maybe cover it with that. So um, now in the next segment, I'm going to be talking about PE ratios, but I'm going to be talking about what you hear all these stock buyback programs going on, you know, corporations buying their own stock and why they might do that, how it affects their, their earnings per share. So stay tuned. If you're retired or approaching retirement in the next five to 10 years, join us for an informative live event. This event is all about you, the challenges you face and the information you need to help you build the future that you want. There's no pressure to become a client. Our goal is simply to give you valuable information that you can use to make smarter financial decisions. We hope that by the time you leave this event, you'll be one step closer to your retirement goals. Welcome back. In this segment, I wanna to talk to you about stock buybacks. Why do companies do them? Well, one reason they might do it is to give their key execs some bonuses, right? They buy their stock back, give it as a bonus. But there's another reason sometimes they might do this. It's regarding price to earnings ratios. Now, just to show you how this works, this is a stock selling for $100 per share, all right? And let's say its earnings per share is $5. That's gonna be a PE ratio of 20, the 100, the stock price divided by its earnings. Now, why is that an important number to understand with stocks or, or funds? Because the market historically is traded at about 16, 17 times earnings. So if you have a PE ratio higher than that, you might have one that's you know, maybe a little overvalued. You, what you want is a, is a low PE ratio. So you know, take, the, take this company, it's got, it's got earnings of $4 million, it's got 100 million shares outstanding, meaning there's 100 million shares out there that people can buy or own. If you take the earnings divided by the number of shares, it gives you $4 per earnings. All right, so if I take that $100 stock price and I divide by the $4 in earnings, I'm now getting a price to earnings ratio of now 25. 
Now it's a little bit high, right? So might, what, what might this company do? Well, let's say it buys back some of its shares. So it's gonna buy back, let's say in this particular case, just so we can understand it, let's say they buy back 20 million shares, all right? Earnings don't change. The company's still only making $4 million, but now they only have 80 million shares outstanding. If I do the P.E. ratio on this now, what am I going to see? If I take that 80 divided by the 4, now I'm basically back up to a P.E. ratio of 20. Now why is this important to understand? In this corporate stock buyout, listen, my earnings didn't change. Was my company really any healthier? But by buying back that stock, it made me look like it was. Now you're hearing a lot about this in the news, you know, corporations buying back their stock. What would we rather see them do with those earnings? Well, pay them back in dividends to the shareholders might be a nice thing. How about they, you know, reinvested into research and development or capital expenditures that might make their company grow? Now, companies do that, but what the concern is and what you're hearing in the news is when they're doing this and it's not really improving their earnings much, maybe not so good. So anyway, I hope that kind of educates you a little bit on why they do that and especially how it's affected with PE ratios. Folks, we have the ability to take any portfolio and actually calculate as a whole what the P.E. ratio of, is of that portfolio. Very important to understand, especially if it's kind of way above the historic averages. So I encourage you, if you're somebody who really wants to know that, give us a call. Guys, I wanted to do a segment on um, stock buybacks because we're hearing so much about it in the news. A lot of people hear it, but they don't even understand, you know, what it means. Um, in a lot of cases, some of these companies are just doing it to, you know, beef up their own earnings per share, and, it, and it's kind of a kind of a tricky way to kind of do it, right? So um, I just wanted folks to kind of understand what that was all about. Sure, and, and folks, on today's show, obviously we've covered a number of different topics, but that's part of what's important in helping you plan to retire well. We're not just focused just on the investments and, and looking at um, growth and stocks and bonds and all that. It comes back to also understanding an income plan, and with that coincides a tax plan, knowing when to look at IRAs and potential Roth conversions, and then estate planning is, is it plays a key role as well as insurance planning. So there's a lot of different areas that you want to be paying attention to in retirement, and that's part of what we do here at Centennial Wealth Advisory. Exactly right, John. You know, retirement's like 20 to 30 years of unemployment, right? I mean, there's so many potential traps in retirement. You worked hard at this point to get there. Now it's time to make sure you have a, a concise plan to be able to meet those goals and aspirations that you want to have in your retirement. We here want to offer you a free no obligation review of your current portfolio and see if you do have a plan to retire well and what that may look like for you in your individual situation. Whether you're married or single or widowed, whatever it may be, it's an appropriate time to at least get that second opinion, another set of eyes on it and see if we can help you at all um, come to your situation and, and have a plan that makes you comfortable. Thanks for watching this week on Retiring Well. We hope to see you back here next week as we are a new show again, helping you learn how to retire well.